And it goes a little something like I am going to be telling you a scary childhood story. When I was two years old, my mom passed away. My dad wasn't in the picture, so I went to go live with my grandparents. My grandparents lived in a super old home that was built in the 1800s. I was a very imaginative child. So when I told my grandparents that I used to see people in the house, they just didn't believe me. There was one lady in particular that I would always see. She would sit at the end of my bed and watch me fall asleep. I wasn't scared of her because I thought she was an actual person. Plus, I was super little, so nothing even crossed my mind. At this point, I was like four or five years old. I remember her talking to me constantly. She even sang me the song Rockabye Baby to get me to go to bed one night. Every single day when I would get home, I could see her in my window. At that point, I thought she was just waiting for me. She just wanted to be my friend, right? But as I got older, things started to get really weird between me and her. She wasn't this nice lady anymore. Stay tuned for part two. This is why she never joined a non-tagged game. So I joined my cousin, and she was playing this game. Basically, a non-tagged game is if you can say anything without it being tagged out. So me and my cousin were messing around by saying these bad words because it wouldn't tag out. And we started chatting a little until a group of people came up to us saying really inappropriate things. But we just ignored them and moved out because it's a big map. But they were following us saying even more bad things. So we just left the game and joined the game called Vibe Room. Basically, it's just a really cool game where you can just sit down and chat with your friends. Then the same group joined us in that game. And we do not even know how because we did not friend them. Then they kept telling us to friend them. They literally spammed it. I'll do a part two. Part two of why you should never join an untagged game. So we were in Vibe Room and the same group of people joined us somehow and started spamming friend me, friend me, friend me. Obviously we kept saying no and it was getting pretty annoying so we muted them by doing slash mute and then their username. But then they started coming close to our Roblox characters and started to pretend to do some inappropriate things. So then we just left. And two hours later, I wanted to play by myself. So I went in Tower of Hell. And the same group of people joined us again. And I thought that my friend was friends with these guys. But we didn't know which friend it was. I have 172 friends on Roblox. So I didn't know which one it was. And so I messaged some of my friends on Roblox. See you in part three. Part three of why you should never join a non-tagged game. So at this point, I blocked all the people that were doing the stuff. And by the way, it was online dating stuff that they were saying. It's not like really bad things, but it was kind of disturbing. But some certain people in that group were saying some bad stuff. But anyways, I messaged my friends and nobody knew about them. So I just minded my business, even though I was still curious. And I joined Adopt Me. Of course, the group didn't join because it, they were blocked, but one of my friends did. She told me that she found out what happened. She told me that one of my friends made these groups of people come join me. So I messaged her about it. Sorry, I have to do this. See you in part four. Part four of why you should never join an untagged game. My friend says she knows the person that knows these guys and friends them so that they can come to me. We're going to call her Amelia. So I messaged Amelia and she said it was for revenge. And I was so confused at this point. She says it. It was revenge for stealing her Roblox crush. And I said it wasn't me because I don't online date. Then she sent a screenshot of her online crush next to a girl almost with the same username as me. And I told Amelia, 
that that girl had three eyes in my in her username and I only had two. For some reason she still didn't believe me. Sorry for this. See you guys in part 5. When I was little, I found my mom's credit card and uh <clears throat> Being a six-year-old, I saw my mom putting the credit card on her phone, and I knew how she did it. So, I decided that I was going to put it on my phone. So, I put it on my phone, and I was downloading Roblox, because I thought, hey, I can play with my friends here. That day, I spent $2,000 worth of freaking money on robux Uh, let's just say um a lot of my friends thought i was really cool and rich when my mom found out i hid from her for seriously like a day and then once i got in there she wasn't mad she just said i was captain robux story time of how i figured out that my sister was trying to kill me so me and my sister were like best friends when we were little But she was a very, very jealous person. So years and years go on, but her jealousy seems to start to grow. So I never really thought about it until I found out that she really wanted me dead. But throughout the years, she would do little things to get me hurt. For example, she pushed me off the top of our treehouse and I ended up breaking my arm. But every time I got hurt, my family would baby me and she would get even more mad. So at this time, we're about 16 years old and I had to go in her room to get her laundry. And under her laundry, I found her diary or journal or whatever you call it. I was flipping through the pages, I found out some interesting and crazy things. Then one was named The Perfect Murder. What an original name. She had this big, huge dresser in her room. She went into a lot of detail about how she was going to kill me. But it stated that she was going to push the dresser on top of me and jump on it until I, you know, then scream for help. I'm running out of time like for part two. Part two of how I found out that my sister was trying to kill me. Continue on with the story, after I read what I read in her diary, I decided it was best to keep it to myself. So about a month and a half later, I start to think to myself, and I'm like, okay, maybe she's not actually gonna do it. Y'all, I don't know why, but I was literally not scared that my sister was, like, about to kill me. So about two and a half months after I read what I read in her diary, she calls me into her room and in this fakest voice ever goes, Sissy, why are you being so distant from me? I just looked at her like she was crazy. Then she goes, I know you read my diary. At that exact moment, she looked psycho. I don't know what I was thinking, but right after she said that, my reflex was to knock her out. So I knocked her out, then I stomped on her head. I called my mom into the room and read her the diary, or whatever the heck my sister put in there. Mind you, while I'm reading my mom this diary, she's still knocked out on the floor. My mom then continues to say she's going to put her in a mental hospital. So to this day, my sister's in a mental hospital, and if you're listening to this and you ever get out, please don't kill me. I'm actually living an amazing life right now. This is a story time on why you should never go on Omegle. So my friend invited me to have a sleepover with her. And we had pretty much fun. We went trick-or-treating and stuff. We got all that candy. We were all sugared up. We decided to do an all-nighter. We did some really weird things. We were, like, going outside, like, at 1 a.m. in the midnight and doing cartwheels on our yard. And, like, it was really fun. So we got a bit tired, so we went inside and we decided to go make ourselves some coffee. So after that, we went on TikTok. Our For You page was filled with people going on Omegle. And we saw, like, famous people getting on, and, like, it was cool. So we're like, hmm, let's try to meet one of these famous people. So we grabbed my friend's laptop and we searched up Omegle. So we got on, and it was going pretty fun. We met some friends, but until this one guy popped up. Part two is up right This is why you should always watch videos to the end. In 2003, a woman came home to her apartment to see that her door was unlocked. She went inside, nothing was missing, so she assumed she must have left it open. When it happened a few more times, but still nothing was missing in her apartment, she went out and got a camera, set it up in her apartment, aimed at the front door. The next day, her door was unlocked, so she reviewed the footage. She watches in horror as late in the night, her front door opens and in walks this tall, creepy man who looks around and then walks towards her bedroom off camera. She immediately sprints out of her apartment and calls the police, who show up and tell her to go back in her apartment and just try to stay calm and that they would put an officer right outside her door so she's safe. As she's sitting on the bed, totally traumatized, she realizes something. She only saw him enter her apartment on that video. She doesn't know if he actually left. As she's sitting there, she feels breathing on her ankles. 
She runs out, the cop comes in, and he finds the tall, creepy man under the bed holding a knife and a camera. This girl woke up with bruises every morning, but when her parents checked the security camera, they immediately called the police. Little Alyssa was just like any other six-year-old girl. One morning, her parents noticed she had woken up with bruises, and this steadily got worse for weeks. It got so bad that Alyssa could not go out in public without people thinking she was being abused. During recess one day, a teacher noticed the sheer amount of bruises on Alyssa's body. And later that night, police broke into the family's house to bring the parents in for questioning. But since they had no evidence, Evidence, they released the parents who needed to find out what was going on. That night, her dad set up a secret security camera in Alyssa's bedroom. That morning, Alyssa came down with new bruises. So her dad immediately sprinted to his laptop to review the footage, but you won't believe what he found. Before I tell you, I found this app where you can expose people by changing their text messages. Links in my bio if you want to try too. The video showed Alyssa crawling on all fours around her room just like she was possessed. Turns out she was sleep crawling, but I still think she needs an exorcist. Story time. So this was two years ago and I was at school and it was a normal day until the principal went on the speaker and said, we're in lockdown, go in your closets. So we went ahead and went in the closets. We were all confused. Some people were scared. Everyone was like kind of asking the teacher what was going on and stuff. Now during this time, I wasn't asking anything or saying anything because I knew during a lockdown, you don't want to say anything. So if there is someone in the school, they won't find where you are. But I was still listening to them because I was curious like everyone else. So while everyone was asking the questions, one girl stood up and said, if you're not going to say what's going on, I'm going to get out of the closet. The teacher yelled at her and told her no. And the teacher yelled loud, so whoever was in the school obviously heard. So the door opened and everyone became silent. And so basically for part two. This is why I'm very careful to the people I talk on the internet. About two years ago when I first started Roblox, I was very open and wanting everyone to be my friend. And I was hoping someone would ask me to be their friend too. I was so happy when someone did. There was this guy named Bren Sinwa, and he was the one that asked to be my friend. Of course I said yes because at the time I was very open like I said. But the weird thing was when I accepted his friend request, I got disconnected from my server. I wasn't sus about him at all, and I went downstairs to go check my router. It was totally fine, and I reset in my phone. I went back on Roblox and saw that I got a message from Bren Sinwa. Before I decided to read it, I went to go look at his profile. I saw that he made a group. I was starting to think that he didn't want me to find his group. The group had a really weird name. The group name was called Ben Sinwa Curse, but dumb little me decided to join, like for part two.